Now I also want to welcome the Swedish minister, welcome Gunilla Karlsson, who's sitting there. You soon are going to be on the stage together with your Danish colleague. So, how do we bring all this into policies? How does research and results meet policy? How does research and results meet politicians? We're going to ask ourselves that, and I first want to welcome Gunilla Karlsson, Swedish Minister of Foreign Aid. Thank you for organizing and having this opportunity. It's uh, a good, good uh, occasion, and I think might be that what we want to do with Swedish aid is really to address people living under the effects of climate change. We don't think that we can stop climate change, but rather to see how we can work with water and sanitation, how we can take on the effects, uh, and thereby we are not taking on that aid should do it. The full job of climate change, we need a change behavior but climate change is affecting poor people more and poor people in developing countries or lower middle income countries. So that's why we need development aid to, to, to deal with these things. So I think it's a pretty good answer though. Should I say something else? I have a very, very long speech, but I was rather looking forward to stand together with Christian and to talk about these things on, on uh, what's the effects of, uh, of climate change and how we deal with this. But just a few words, because I just came from another presentation on the uh, next uh, ad agenda for development uh, goals. And I think the trick will now be to really carry the voices of the poor people and to see their aspirations to be part of globalization and also to plan for a planet that should host more inhabitants where everyone should have rights and also opportunities to, to take part in development as such. Then we have real development that would be sustainable. And that's why we have to address now the uh, still causes for poverty where I think the effects of climate change and natural degradation is one thing that we have to look into because what we currently have gained, partly thanks to development assistance, might now be blown away or flooded away or well, whatever. But also that we have to see that if we are not empowering the people to be part of globalization and to live sustainable, each and every one of us, we will not have the opportunity to have the social cohesion because I still believe and it would not be understood here, but one of the worst pollution that we do still have is that we have poverty in the world. Where we have countries that are having a lot of poverty, they don't even have the opportunity also to be part of environment global uh, accountability. And that's why we have to see that we have an integrated agenda and to empower people to be part of their own development and destiny. And that's the best thing I think development assistance can do and the best entry point for start to deal with the lack of social cohesion and the lack of taking care of our environment together, whether it's the global environment or the local. And I was so happy for the introduction that we just heard about start to work locally and to see that people are equipped that they can participate and to invest for their own future and really to see that they are part of development and they are also part of having a, a sustainable living conditions but also that therefore they have to have a voice and to see when their livelihoods are deteriorating, when they have no fishes left, when their water is making them sick, they also have to have people to be held accountable for why it's so. And that leads us to local governance as well as global governance. And that's my thinking here. And that's also, and I should perhaps be provocative as you gave me so many minutes. That's why I think that even we are so much in Sweden now concerned and working hard on about making our own economy more resilient and also being more, more um, sustainable when it comes to dealing with energy resources, when it comes to, to having the opportunity to see that we can also have a more of a so-called green economy. I think we, we are learning a lot that could be adapted and where we have to share much more to the low and middle income countries. But we also have to see that our anxiety about the climate change as such should not be taken as hostage for putting all these kind of thinking to development assistance. Because I see too much now that middle-income countries with middle-income people are so 
obsessed about this new trend so that they are not combating extreme poverty. And that's why I will be kind of a little bit provocative person and to say I'm not finished yet with the poverty reduction. But in order to make that sustainable, we also have to take into the environmental uh, aspects and of course the effects of climate change. I sometimes used to provo provoke a little bit on that. Uh, and that's why I was happy with the answer, because we are not taking the ambition to, to uh, end uh, climate change with development assistance, rather to equip people to live with the effects of climate change that are already there and affecting them. Mm -hmm.